Hey guys, welcome to another practice vlog. So this is the start of a new practice vlog series where I learn Bieber's Passacaglia. So Bieber was a very prominent composer and violinist in the 17th century, and this is this was originally written for violin, but I'm going to be playing an arrangement for viola. So my first step is going to be listening to it with the recording while following along in the music and kind of making some decisions on how I want to play this musically. And then I'll start looking at it. So I'm super excited to get started on this. I'll be performing this for my final master's recital in the spring. So I will have documented two pieces for this recital, um, the Rager Viola Suite, which you can find up in the eye. I have a whole playlist of my practice vlogs and then this Pasacalia. And then there are two other pieces that I'm playing, but I probably won't vlog them. This video and future videos have corresponding blog posts, which you can find down in the description. I run a blog called Life from the Viola section. It's always linked down below. Like I said, my first step is to listen to this with the recording while looking at the score. So I have the score up on my iPad and I'm going to find a few recordings. I think first I'll listen to it played on the violin because that's what it was originally written for. And then I'll listen to some recordings on the viola so that I can hear kind of what those differences are and make some stylistic decisions. First recording. This one is um, a violinist, Rachel Podger. It was recorded in 2015. So I just finished my first listen and not too much was different from the arrangement that I will be playing. Um, there were just a few like extra double stop notes I guess um, and the violinist rolled some things a little differently or just made some different maybe performance changes. I don't know. Um, so next, I think I will find a recording done by a violist and see what differences there are. So let's see what's on Spotify. So after a bit of searching on Spotify, I found a recording made by Nicholas Quartz. It was done in 2013. So that's the first viola recording that I will listen to. I did listen to one on YouTube a few months ago when I chose to do this for my recital, but my first official listen with the score on my first day of working on the piece. Okay, so that recording felt a lot different from the violin recording that I listened to. So just the tone of the viola was a lot different from the tone of the violin in the first recording. He did a lot of sections differently, dynamically. Um, like there were a few sections where the violinist played them really big, but the violist played them very small and kind of inward. So um, Nicholas Cordes, the violist, used a lot of ornamentation and embellishments. Um, and I want to compare a few other recordings to see what different ornamentations and embellishments other violists have done, um, just to get some more ideas going and see kind of where I can do things. Though, I mean, I'm sure I can do things anywhere, but just to see what other people have done before I can make my own decision. One thing I liked about both recordings was that they set up this repeating bass line in kind of a way that stops in between each note and then that allows the bass line to sound the same every time you hear it even when things are going on on top and you can't sustain that lower note so my instinct would have been to help to hold each each of those bass notes really long nice like lead them into each other but then it would change when i play things over top of it because i won't be able to really hold that out and draw them in together while things are happening above it. So I, I really like that idea and I think I'm gonna play it that way, where there's kind of a space in between each note because then it'll sound really, really similar when I'm playing things on top of it. So I think I'm going to just listen to a few more recordings, maybe without the score, just kind of take it all in. And then sometime soon, I will sight read through this and I'm sure I will let you guys follow along with that. Hey guys, so I think it's been about two weeks since you saw me listen to recordings of the Beaver Passacaglia, but today I'm finally going to go ahead and sight read it. So first I'm going to kind of identify some potentially tricky spots and what I think I will have to focus on throughout this piece. Um, not just sight reading it, but like my whole journey through the piece. So there are a lot of double stops, <laughs> a lot, um, a lot of rhythm changes a lot of string crossings, a lot of it is like keeping a nice open tone. 
I'm sure I'll have to work hard to keep that bass line sounding consistent through this whole piece. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sight read this. <laughs> As you know I'm preparing this for my master's recital in the spring so in just a few months and so I made a list of the rep that I'm doing for that recital and kind of the technique that I need to focus on for each piece so I made that list just a few days ago Beaver is right there so before I played through it I said that I would need to focus on double stops style trills bow distribution, quiet shifts, and a clear tone. And I think that all of those things apply, especially bow distribution, um, and just having a sense of what these different rhythms are and kind of how they occur, maybe. The double stops are definitely a big thing. Um, my hand is pretty tired now, and I, I just need to find ways to keep my stamina up through this. I know it's only three pages, but it's a lot because there are double stops in every measure. So, you know, it's just gonna be a lot on my hand. So just finding ways to relax through this piece, maybe even writing in little spots where I can just relax my hand a little bit for even just like an eighth note beat, you know, just things like that. So now it's time to start working on it. I'm just gonna play through it um, without the double stops. <laughs> Okay, so I really should go through all of these double stops and just tune them. So that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> up the other strings. I need to shake it out. <laughs> to take a break from this already like my hand just feels really tense and I don't want to overdo anything especially because I haven't been practicing too much lately just because of the holidays so I don't want to hurt myself before I'm used to playing too much so I'm gonna take a break <laughs> so it's now the next day um yesterday when I said I was going to take a break my hand just felt really sore so I ended up just not practicing anymore last night so tonight I'm going to just keep going through at least the same section that I did yesterday. Hopefully I'll get through some more, but I'm just trying to get my hand comfortable with all of these double stops because it is really hard on my hand. I did warm up with a lot of double stops today, so hopefully my hand is kind of more awake today. <laughs> I think I'll just start at the beginning and go until like halfway through the first page. Try playing it as written, and if that doesn't go well, then I'll change up what I'm doing. <laughs>
lot more in tune than yesterday. It was, it was just a little easier already. Even just, you know, even though I didn't get that much work done yesterday, it still felt a bit easier than before. So something I'm playing around with is starting in the third measure. If I want to play um, this first half of the bar all on a down bow, or if I want to split it up, I'm not entirely sure what would sound better. So it's either this. <laughs> sounded better. I'm going to try playing through this again and just do it that way. See what I think of it. So now I'm going to focus on these double stops starting in measure 13 because they've been kind of out of tune and I want to practice just going between those double stops so that I can feel the change between them, see kind of the direction that the, mu that the music is going in. <laughs> So even through all of these double stops, that repeating bass line, which is the main element of a Passacaglia, is still carrying through. So I really want to bring out that bass line. So the bass line is always the bottom notes of the chord. So I'm going to play around with different ways that I can bring out that bass line. So I'm not sure how exactly I want to do it because ideally this would be like more than one instrument and the bass line would be played by someone, you know, capable of doing that and it would carry through, but I'm one instrument and I can't exactly do that. So how can I make those bass notes kind of carry through each um, big beat of the 6-8? What if I kind of play those bass notes by themselves a little bit before I play the top notes? Because the bass notes are um, stemmed by themselves and then the other two notes of the double stops are facing up, so what if I play the bass note by itself and then the two notes on top? more what I'm looking for. I'm just going to try that like exactly the same way again, see if I like it even more next time. <laughs> So this time I'm going to start back at the beginning and play through up until where I just stopped so that I can see kind of how it works in context. <laughs> I was really happy with that. I thought that was really effective. So I think I'll move on. So I think the first thing I will do with this section is to again go through and play those double stops one by one. end of the double stops for this little section that I'm doing. So I'll just do that one more time. Okay, that felt better. I think I'll just put that back into context now. Yeah, that was nice. So this time around, I want to focus on the phrasing and where I want each of these two eighth note groups to go like yeah I, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet so I'm just gonna play it through and see what kind of my instinct is <laughs> I 
might have moved like done a little bit too much rubato for the time but maybe I didn't I don't know I'm going to see if I can get the ideas across that I just did without like kind of warping the time so much <laughs> happy with that. I'm not really happy with how the bass notes are coming out in measures 23 and 24 so I'm going to work on just making those sound a little bit better. <laughs> So I keep messing up this run, so I'm just going to write in a fingering. was with the last movement of the Rager. If you missed that, I will link the exact video up above. But I'm kind of focusing on adding the phrasing in right away, um, even if I don't have the technique perfect, because what I tend to do is I tend to focus on the technique and then add in all of, you know, the dynamics and phrasing and everything that I want to do. But I've heard that it's a lot better to do the phrasing right away, so I'm really, really trying to do that with the pieces that I'm learning right now to kind of change the way that I learn the pieces and see if that's a way that really works for me. And so far it has, and I'm kind of letting the musical decisions dictate my technique, like my fingerings, my bowings, um, and I think that's a much better way of doing things. So I'm really trying to focus on that. So I know with this piece, I need to focus a lot on not tensing up my left hand, especially my thumb, because that was a big problem that I used to have like two years ago. And I've really fixed it. At least I've like come really far <laughs> in fixing it. Um, and it does feel a little sore right now, but I am actively thinking of releasing it when I shift and just, if it ever feels tense, I think of just kind of releasing it, just kind of letting it go. So that's something that I really need to focus on throughout this piece as I learn it over the next few months. My hand is getting tired, so I think I'm going to call it a night. Hey guys, it's been a few days now since I last practiced the Bieber. The last time I practiced was the last thing that you saw. So my goal today is to get to the end of the first page and finish this first vlog out. So the first thing I'm going to do is just play through the parts that I've already worked on, and then I will start looking at this last section and I think I'm going to need to pull up a recording to really learn this rhythm correctly because I just know, like, I've had problems with it, especially when I sight read, and then I started to look at it another time, and it was just really difficult. So first step is to just play through the parts that I've already done. <laughs> I just have to solidify a few things, but I think I'm retaining everything pretty well, which is the goal. So next I'm going to pull up a recording, listen to the rest of this first page, and then just work on it. So I listened to this next section twice. I don't know if it's stuck in my head yet, but um, I'm gonna try it. One thing that I did notice throughout though is um, I'm listening to Nicholas Gord's version or recording. Um, and I found that everything is just kind of light and I feel like I'm playing it very heavy. Like the music itself feels heavy, but his playing just, it's quiet and it's kind of peaceful. And I feel like I'm really digging in. So I want to play around with how quiet can I make these chords while having them still sound good. But anyway, I'm just going to work on this last section of the first page for now. Okay, that wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be, so I'm just gonna keep working on this. So 
that first time that I tried it, I played it a little faster than I would like to practice it, just so that I could get the feel of those rhythms since that's what I'm working on and I just heard it in a performance tempo, so I wanted to recreate what I just heard. I thought that would be easier for my ear and my brain to comprehend. Just a practice tip for you. <laughs> Okay, that's feeling a lot easier. I don't feel like spending a ton of time on this piece today, um, so I'm gonna start back at the beginning, kind of work on getting things a little bit more polished, and once I reach the end of this page, I think I'll be done with this for today. <laughs> if I should really roll these chords rather than playing one note and then kind of two because this is the opening and it still feels really quiet like it hasn't quite blossomed yet so I think I'm gonna try rolling this section starting in around measure 13 for now <laughs> And then when these chords kind of, they don't thicken, but um, we get those minor thirds close together. Um, I think when those start, I can do less rolling and more kind of chunking, I guess. Um, I think that opens it up and makes it sound better. Okay, now that I've learned the whole first page of the Passacaglia, this is going to be the end of my first practice vlog. So in the next one, I think I'm going to try to find some sort of manuscript or just like original score to see if there are any dynamics to see what chords might have been changed i know that this is in c minor rather than g minor which is the original key so there will of course be some differences there but you know i want to see what those differences are and if i can kind of honor the composer's intentions a little bit better than what this edition might call for so i'm excited to keep working on this piece and i hope you will follow me through this journey Subscribe if you want to see more of my practice vlogs and just general music content. Thanks for watching!